Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I want to share with you uh, an experience I've had last week about taking my PlayStation 3 apart and I put it back together as well. So um, what I did there was, what I've noticed is, uh, this is kind of 2012 vintage, so by the time I'm recording this video it's about six years old, but it's uh, you know in really good shape. I like my PlayStation 3 very much. I'm using it more than my PlayStation 4, interestingly. Uh, but I've noticed something while I was playing is that he was starting to make some odd noises so a really loud fan noise happened uh, on games like Grand Theft Auto 5 and 4 so things that have a high intensity of you know rendering things and so he's, he's really busy and gets very hot there and uh, I was thinking oh that doesn't sound good so if anything overheats that's never a good sign so I did some research and people told me two things basically well one reason for that loud fan noise could be that the PlayStation is overheating so there could be a lot of dust in the PlayStation and uh, I've done my best to clear everything out of these um, slots here so there's a lot of dust that just just gets sucked in over time there's also some down here and on the edges uh, but that didn't seem to solve the problem so then the other suggestion I read was that uh, there is there's these two chips that get really hot one is the CPU one is the GPU and they are covered with thermal paste which is uh, I'm using something called Arctic X4 I'll leave you a, a link in the description for that uh, that basically seals the rift between the actual hot chip and the heat sink and that thermal paste dries out over time and as a result, uh, not a lot of heat can be conducted from the thing that emits the heat, i.e. The, the chip that gets hot and the heat sink that disperses the heat. So when that dries out, uh, heat doesn't get taken away from the hot chip anymore as efficiently and as a result your PlayStation gets hot. So what we need to do is take this thing apart and apply new thermal paste there. We clean this all off, uh, apply new thermal paste and then the thing is going to be good as new. So in this episode I'm going to share a time lapse with you in which I did it. Let's have a look at this. So this is me uh, obviously you know, tidying up my desk a little bit and uh, getting everything ready. So um, I'm going to talk you through what I did there and perhaps highlight some of the weaknesses of what needs special attention. <clears throat> this is the Arctic paste I'm using, the Arctic MX4, that's the thermal paste. So again, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Now, believe it or not, the, I'm following the iFixit guide here, by the way. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description below as well. The first thing I need to do is grab some of those rubber feet that come off with a little spudger. And uh, then we need a Phillips screwdriver, a regular Phillips screwdriver for those screws. This is the hard drive that's coming up. This is here, the, this is a close-up of the actual original hard drive, which was a Hitachi GST, that's for global storage products. 500 gigabyte spinning hard disk. Tests have shown, by the way, that replacing this with an SSD does not make your PlayStation 3 any faster, so don't waste any time or money on that, from what I understand. Larger hard drive is, of course, easily replaced there with a the little caddy. Now, um, the most difficult bit to take off there was, in fact, those two finishers. And those are the two little plastic strips at the top and at the bottom of the front, like the front and the back at the top of the PlayStation. Those were really difficult to take off. My wife was saying, oh my god, it sounds like you've broken one, but luckily I have not, so there we go. Another screwdriver that we need, once you look at what this is, finally me having removed the bottom finisher there. And you can see a lot of dust. So I've got my handheld vacuum cleaner handy to hoover that all off so that does not come out with just compressed air. That did not do the trick. Now the second screwdriver I'm using here is a specialized Torx screwdriver. You get that from iFixit as well. It's one that has a little hole in the middle and again more dust comes off. Yeah, it's with the one for tamper-proof Torx screws. This is the disk drive now. Uh, that is a little bit of a fiddly thing. Right now we just need to move it out of place to access a screw that's underneath it. So don't uh, move it away at this point. Just move it to the side so that you can access that screw to take off the little fan bit here. So this is the, this is the power supply that I've just removed. And the other bit at the front here where the big fan is, that is uh, all part of the heat sink. So we're going to remove that in a moment. Uh, disk drive comes out, again, very fragile cables, be careful there, they're, they're just fragile, but they slot in, in and out very easily. 
So this is now the bottom plate that we're removing, including the little pressure plate. We have two pressure plates that hold the heatsink in place with the chips that get hot. This one was one of them. And now we're removing uh, another uh, wireless LAN and the Bluetooth cable here from the board. And that should allow us to take that bit out. So that's the bottom removed. And we're left with basically the logic board sandwiched in between two uh, metal houses which are good against shielding and FCC regulations but they're also part of the heat sink. So yeah, th those are actually the Bluetooth and wireless antenna get removed, cables get removed. The bottom plate, this is the second pressure plate we're removing, that all comes off revealing the logic board. There it is, that's the bottom of the logic board, that's the top of the logic board and uh, the other part of the heat sink. Now you can see all the caked off really dried out paste here and that's what I'm removing uh, first of all with just a piece of kitchen towel and in a moment I'm going to use a piece of just an alcohol wipe to get all the residue off. There's two types of uh, dust, well actually here this is the, uh, the top of the screen, the big silver thing, that's the actual CPU, the cell CPU that Sony developed and at the bottom the tiny black thing with the PlayStation logo, that's the RSX Reality Synthesizer, sounds so cool, that's basically the GPU in the PlayStation 3. Very exciting. So there's two types of dust that you find. There's the one type of dust that can easily be blown away or hoovered off with a vacuum cleaner. And there's the other type of dust which is so fine that a vacuum cleaner or compressed dust won't actually get rid of it. So in that case, if you find any of that, just wipe it off with a piece of kitchen towel. Here's the other part of the two heat sinks there, this little copper part that goes on the GPU, the big silver thing goes on the CPU, and those two things, they need to be kind of, uh, well, one, one surface needs to be covered with the thermal paste, and we're going to do that in a moment. I thought to myself, while I've got this thing opened up, I'm going to measure how uh, the battery is doing in there, in the uh, this is a 2032 battery that I thought may I might as well replace on this occasion. So I went out and, and bought new batteries because uh, the same battery is in a little um, Apple TV remote from yesteryear, the one that wasn't rechargeable. So I thought maybe I'll, uh, I'll get some new batteries and uh, measure the new battery as well. And it turns out the new battery wasn't actually as full as the one that's still in the PlayStation. So anyway, this is me putting the uh, Arctic thermal paste on there now, just uh, like that, make sure there's no gaps in there. And um, now the other part of the heatsink goes back on. That's now squidging the, the paste into that little rift there, and it means the heat can be conducted uh, really well there. For the heatsink and the hot chips to be held in place, we're applying something called a pressure plate, and that's the one I'm fixing there now. And this is something, I didn't have to buy that, that's part of the original construction, of course. So um, uh, that's just that just holds these two things very tightly in place and uh, conducts the heat very well. There's a second one that we're gonna see just, uh, just here behind that big fan in a moment when I turn this thing around. I'm gonna fix that with a single screw. That's the one in the very front there, the, the thing that looks like a tongue, the one I'm putting the screw on now. And that's the second pressure plate. Make sure all the cables are slotting back in. Uh, never use any force when you do that. Uh, they, they should be kinked as they were before. And once again, that little um, drive that doesn't lie in perfect position until we've fixed the power supply, which is what I'm doing now. And then you tighten the screw and then the disk drive goes back into place. So that's one thing I, I thought I'd, I'd mention here. Then the top thing goes on and really the PlayStation is going to function without the finishes as well. But you know, if you want it to look nice and neat, then you know, have a look if you can fix them. I again had a bit of problem with that. That was the, the most fiddly part. These, these two pieces here at the, on the PlayStation, this bit and that bit. I don't know why it was so difficult, but uh, it probably didn't help that I mixed them up the front one and the back one uh, obviously the front one does not fit in the position of the back one <laughs> and this is the hard drive that goes back then the last uh, piece of side material goes in there Phillips screws go in the bottom rubber feet go at the bottom and that is it my PlayStation is brand new and shiny again and uh, after several tests I can safely say that if I put Grand Theft Auto on now or if I leave the PlayStation on for a long period of time that loud fan noise no longer happens so I'm really 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 chuffed with this. So big thanks to iFixit for providing that guide um, and 
uh, and of course thank you for Sony for building rock solid technology that we can actually take apart and fix. One thing that I particularly enjoy and I believe Jan Beta commented it on this on, on, a, on a video, he, he recently found an original PlayStation 1 in a dumpster. I might link to that video as well if you're not subscribed to his channel. Have a look at what he takes apart slash destroys and does things with. He found that Sony is kind enough to put little arrows onto screws that have to be removed from a logic board. Uh, just in answer to his question, yes, Sony still do that. So the PlayStation 3 still has those nice little markers that tell you which screws need to be removed and I guess which ones can stay in place. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, then of course, you know, please share it with friends, family and total strangers. If you have any questions of how to take the PlayStation 3 apart, I'm not sure if I'm your man actually, but if, if you do have any questions, I've just recently done it. So please uh, leave me a comment below. Perhaps I can help. If you want to support me on this crazy mission of whatever it is that I'm doing here on YouTube, then please consider becoming a patron of mine at, over at my Patreon campaign. You get funky goodies in return, free copies of my books and free 3D products and, you you know anything including free web hosting if you so desire so you know i'm going to link to that in the description as well thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well for other funky things that i'm going to put out in the future and um i will see you next time take care bye bye take as much time as you want you're in control Step forward. Our position. I'm sure you'll find using your new MCA Disco Vision system to be rewarding and enjoyable. I thank you for watching.